Meghan Markle and Prince Harry say that they were in a near catastrophic car chase involving paparazzi in New York City last night. Near catastrophic. What does that mean? I mean, near catastrophic is what we all have every time we look down to change the radio while we're driving our cars or engage in the stupidity of checking a text or our phones while we're driving. That's near catastrophic. It is. (laughs) Anything could happen with anybody on the road around your car. Uh, It was near catastrophic, you see. What they say, this is per CNN, is they were involved in a near catastrophic car chase involving PAPS last night, Tuesday, according to their spokesperson. Have yet to hear from anyone in the NYPD on any of this. The couple were followed by a swarm of paparazzi, but there was no car accident, according to a law enforcement source. So a law enforcement source is saying no car accident at all, but there were paparazzi there. Okay, this is a night in New York. Ask any person of interest or who's a public person. Uh, It's happened to me. I've seen it happen to others. I was at a restaurant, Nobu, uh, one time when it was like, you would have thought that the actual Queen of England was there. And in fact, it turned out to be Kendall Jenner. Uh, or no, the other Jenner, the, the other one. <laughs> what? Kylie, Kylie Jenner. I guarantee she had more people following her than these two did. Um, the incident happened after Harry accomplished, uh, accompanied Meghan to the Women of Vision Awards held at the city's Ziegfeld Ballroom. Uh, they were traveling also with Meghan's mother, Doria Raglan. Spokesperson for the couple said last night the Duke and Duchess of Sussex and Mrs. Raglan were involved in this near catastrophic chest at the hands of a ring a ring of highly aggressive paparazzi. The relentless pursuit lasting over two hours resulted in multiple near collisions. Again, no actual. (laughs) Involving other drivers on the road, pedestrians, and two NYPD officers who were apparently there to protect the couple. By the way, they're probably from, I'm told by law enforcement, from the intel division within the NYPD, which is sort of like the Secret Service and will sometimes go to protect VIPs in town for events like this. Um, The statement said the couple understand that while being a public figure comes with a level of interest from the public, uh, it should never come at the cost of anyone's safety. And now they want to discourage against dissemination of the images, given the ways in which they were obtained, because they encourage a highly intrusive practice that is dangerous to all involved. Well, sorry, you two, but you're in America now. And in America, the the press has the right to photograph you when you're in a public place or on the streets or leaving a place like the Ziegfeld Theater. That's the way it works here. And it's not pleasant. I've been followed as well, but it's part of life in this country where we still have freedom of the press. You don't like it? Go back home. For the love of God, please go back home, Harry. Take your wife with you. I don't know how we got saddled with you to begin with. So now they come out um, and say to TMZ that... What happened was they got in their black car, their black SUV, and then they switched cars. They got into a New York City taxi to try to fool, I guess, the paps that they were still in the SUV. But no, in fact, here's video that TMZ just posted of them in the taxi. And you can see the paparazzi lights actually photographing the two. Okay, this is what happens when you are a star and you're whizzing around New York. I mean, this is nothing extraordinary for a night in NYC. Um, What exactly happened that made it sound so harrowing for them? We don't know. This is what CNN reports. Paparazzi on scooters and bikes zoomed down the sidewalk to keep up with them, according to an unnamed source. Well, I look forward to seeing the actual video of that. Could have happened, but more than likely, that would be really tough to do in, in New York City's Times Square, which is where they were leaving from. And I'll tell you one other thing that doesn't check out about their story. There is no way of having a two-hour car chase in New York City, in Manhattan. There just isn't. There are too many stop signs. There are too many red lights. There is too much foot traffic. There is too much actual traffic. And there's just, it's impossible to be in a car chase in this borough for two hours. So exactly how did that happen? It would have happened out of choice. The couple must have been willing participants to some extent because there are hundreds of places to pull over and get to, quote, safety, which is what they claim they wanted. Right? So I've got questions, in particular because they have a history of lying, as you know, and even of exaggerating their alleged car chases. Who could forget this scene from their Netflix special where they were urging one another to remember safety first, safety first, after one guy on a Vespa was following them, allegedly. Do we have that pap on the scooter again? Yes, ma'am. Oh, we do. Same guy? Same guy. Oh, my God. Watched him go into this park and then... He's going to be with us? Yes, sir. He was just ahead. There's a lot of people who think they've got such a problem with with paparazzi. 
Yeah, those, um, the guys in the basement of the building, too, as we were doing that walk, we were recording, too, just so you're aware. Back in my mom's day, is, it was physical harassment. You know, cameras in your face, following you, chasing you. She's following us. Who? Hey. This path. I think worst case scenario, so safety yeah. first. Worst case yeah. scenario, we're going from one garage to another. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. true. Safety first. Okay. Yes. Right. With the one guy in a Vespa. So they have a history of exaggerating the danger they were allegedly in. Remember when she tried to lead us to believe that her son Archie was basically in a fire when they were on that overseas tour and it turned out one heater in a room that Archie had been in but was no longer uh, started smoking. (laughs) The the child was nowhere near it and was never in danger. Um, So she's got a history here. Let's not even talk about the Oprah interview. Online, people are calling them the Jussie Smollett's of New York City. Other people are saying, call Oprah, call Oprah right away. (laughs) Talk about, let me tell you about something. Most of us who are public figures go through something like this multiple times, and we don't run to our PR agents and have them release a statement playing the victim. My my safety was in danger. It must stop. It has to stop. All right. And I've never revealed this story before, but I will because of what we're seeing here. It was right after I left NBC. I was very much in the news. The paparazzi were all over me. Well, unfortunately, I found out that I had a small basal cell carcinoma on my left temple. It was a nothing. But as you know, if you've ever had one of these things, you have to get the Mohs procedure to get it off. And um, I went into the dermatologist to get it off. And then I was going to go cross town because they said, since it's your face, you should have a plastic surgeon stitch it up. Right. And I did it. It turned out beautifully. You wouldn't even know. By the way, get your skin care checks just to make sure these are things that are not that big a deal. But if you ignore them, they can become one. So I went in to the guy's office who was doing the Mohs procedure. I left and now I've got like a bandage on my left temple and I'm going over to the plastic surgeon's office to have it uh, stitched up. And sure enough, there's a couple paparazzi following me. And I don't particularly want to be photographed with my left temple bleeding, going into a plastic surgeon's because everybody's gonna be like, she's having plastic surgery. She's off the air. That wasn't it at all. I had a little skin cancer, which I also didn't think was anybody's business. So the, I call to, ahead to the surgeon's office. I say, hey, I'm, I'm coming in. I'm being followed. You know, is there like a private entrance or what? There's like, no, you, there's no private entrance. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll have a guard out there to help you get in. I'm like, okay, fine. So I think out of, you know, the, Good spirits, the guy in an effort to like protect me from the paparazzi, but really just call more attention to me, comes outside holding this huge red umbrella, this big umbrella. And like and it's sunny. And he's like shepherding me, and I'm like, oh my God, this is like not what I wanted, but you know, whatever. Let's just get inside. And the paparazzi stops in the middle of the street, they run, the guy dives down, he's under my umbrella, and he's taking photographs from under the umbrella. And I'm like, oh my God, I've got this thing on the side of my face. She couldn't really see because of my hair, but I went in. Sure enough, it hit the papers. What's she doing? What's she doing? What's happening? They didn't put together that I was going in to see a plastic surgeon to stitch up this Mohs procedure. The speculation that hit the press later that day was that I was selling a book to Random House. (laughs) Apparently, Random House is in the same building. Um, Did I run to the papers and say, I've been endangered? I have cancer. I could have pulled that. Bullshit. Most people are in the public eye take it like a man or a woman, and we move on with our day because we understand they have a job to do. And dealing with the press is part of our job too. This woman hasn't seen a paparazzi she wants to avoid. Who are we kidding? Just last week with her stupid little scarf as she was walking her dog, she plays them just like Princess Diana did. And it can be a dangerous game. But if this pair really wants to avoid encounters with the paparazzi that are unwanted, then they should stop cultivating that relationship because it gets a little complicated. By the way, not for nothing, but NBC News is now reporting that they have reached out to the NYPD and the NYPD is saying they don't know anything about it. (laughs) All right, this is what they actually told local NBC. Let me pull it up. Stand by, I'm going through my texts. Via NBC4 New York, the NYPD told NBC New York, they have no information about any incident last night involving Harry and Meghan but have received lots of calls on it. NBC has not yet been able to verify that the incident took place. Um, This is sensationalism. That's what's happening here from a couple that needs attention, a couple that complains at every turn about 
their alleged security problems. They have $100 million plus, but apparently they're not able to protect themselves like everybody else. Like, do you think the paparazzi are after them any more than they're after Tom Brady or Beyonce? You know what they do? They pay for security. That's what they do. They don't run around complaining. Taylor Swift, every time, that, Taylor Swift's house has been broken into in Manhattan numerous times by freaky stalkers. She doesn't run around playing the victim, releasing statements about, oh, what was me? Oh, it was near catastrophic. I could have been in there. No, it's part of becoming someone who's in the public eye. Grow up and stop lying to us because there isn't a car chase in Manhattan ever that's taken two hours through Times Square. That reminds me of the meet the parents scene where they were doing a car race, which is akin to, I think, to this car chase. This is how it would go if you had a car chase in Manhattan. That's how it would go. You couldn't pick up enough speed. Were they going to the Hamptons? Was it an emergency car race to the Hamptons? Because that's the only place that takes two hours on, on a Tuesday night, right? They're exaggerating because they like being in the public eye. And let's face it, he's been trying to make her into Diana from the moment they started dating. Remember early on, she had like a couple of paps following her and he released the statement like, I'm not going to allow her what to happen to her, what happened to my mother. That's not what's happening. Welcome to being a public figure grow up. By the way, if the paparazzi were really doing this up on the sidewalks for two hours, endangering people, these NYPD guys would have arrested them. This would not have gone on for two hours. So I will wait to hear from the NYPD. I am very open-minded to a different story, but what they've put out right now stinks to high heaven, just like everything this pair puts out into the public eye. Some people take CBD for better sleep or less stress and more calm. Some take it for pain relief for better energy, better focus, and concentration. Today, I want to tell you about CB Distillery and their over 2 million satisfied customers. According to a poll of their customers, 90% reported that they sleep better with CBD, 81% said CBD helps with stress, and 80% says CBD helps with aches and pains after physical activity. If you struggle to get a good night's sleep, if you are dealing with too much stress and could use a little calm in your life, if you suffer with pain and discomfort, especially after physical ex activity or exercise, you could give CBD a try from cbdistillery.com. Use my 20% discount by visiting cbdistillery.com and enter my initials MK to get that discount, all right? No prescription required. That's cbdistillery.com, promo code MK for 20% off, cbdistillery.com. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.